What's up everyone, Pags here at MEI Studio. This week we're going to do a bench tips video and show the Studio Projects C1 Mic Mod from MicParts.com. Since I don't have any intention of looking at the C1 from Studio Projects as a standalone video, and there's not much of a history to dive into for the company, I figured why not look at an available mod for this mic that turns it from a typically bright, inexpensive condenser to something with a little more Germanish flair to it, I guess. Here's the quick lowdown on Studio Projects first. Studio Projects was started by Alan Hyatt in 1999 of the PMI Audio Group in Gardena, California. PMI's tale is a little vague. While easily confused with private mortgage insurance, the PMI Group claims to be a designer and manufacturer of audio equipment. However, from my research, it seems the company has more of a distributor role as there aren't any products with the PMI name directly on it, but definitely not to minimize what they've done at all. In fact, PMI Group is responsible for bringing us some huge names in audio like Trident, Valley People, Joe Meek, Toft Audio, Tone Lux, and of course, Studio Projects. After teaming up with a Chinese firm, Beijing 797 Audio Company, Studio Projects was another one of those names that started putting out low-cost but solid quality condenser mics in the late 1990s. At the time, their products were comparable in price to what MXL was putting out, except the circuits were a bit more tame thanks to their engineer Brent Casey. The mics were certainly critically received in a better light than those of MXL, however, the mic's design still had some room for improvement. One of the most popular mics is this one right here, the C1. When it was released, it was instantly hailed as a great mic for budget-minded project studios. Studio projects, studio projects. Studio. Anyway, the mic was bright and in your face like many mics of the time, but it also had a slight roll-off on the bottom end. As a vocal mic, it was the expected sound of the times, I guess you could say. For instruments, though, the mic was a little too forward, making tracking guitars and stuff with it a little hard on the ears. The folks over at MicParts.com decided that since this mic was so popular and the bass components, including the capsule, were pretty high quality already, this mic would be a perfect candidate for a tonal facelift. The mic uses a K67 style capsule, however, the circuit in the stock mic failed to try and attenuate that high end that these capsules tend to exhibit likely to compete with the brightness of other mics at the time. Since I'm not a huge fan of overly bright mics, I dug the mics out of the attic, literally, and picked up a mod kit that were going for about $69 at the time this video was produced. Nice. Thanks, Bark. Anyway, with only a handful of parts and single board swap, why not breathe some life back into this mic and make it a little bit more usable instead of letting it sit in storage? Let's take a look at what the mod requires to put together and then listen to some A-B comparisons on some various things in the studio. Let's get to it. All right, first thing that we're gonna do is go over the manual, make sure that we have all the parts we need and just go over all the steps to make sure that there's no surprises coming up. And then we have to open up the mic. There's just three screws on the bottom of this version. I do have the version one. There are three versions of this mic out there. And once you get the three screws out, the body sleeve just kind of slides right out. And you have two circuit boards on there. There's main board, and then you have the board that just says studio projects on it. And that's all that's on that board. No idea what that's for. Maybe some RF shielding or something, but just seems a little redundant. And now we have to remove two capacitors from the board, and I'm going to try and use this solder pump thing, which I hate. And the idea is that you heat up the solder pad, and then you push the button on the solder pump there, and it's supposed to suck the solder off of the pad. However, doesn't always work that way, and I'm going to be honest with you, uh, this tool is a piece of garbage. So I brought out my handy solder pump, since I do so much soldering and repair work, having one of these is pretty much essential. Uh, there is a vacuum pump on this, and you just heat the pad, pull the trigger, and it just sucks the solder right off of the pad, as if it never had solder on it. 
And most times, if you do this right, the component will just come right off and it's pretty easy. Sometimes you gotta go in for a second hit, but most of the time it's pretty good. The first thing that we have to do as far as the mod goes is replace those two capacitors we took out with two new ones of different value. And it's important to make sure that you put the correct capacitors in the correct spots. They are two different values, so you don't want to reverse them because that'd be bad. And that solder pump really leaves the pads so clean you can just slide the new parts in without any problems whatsoever. So once they're in there, then we just solder the new pieces in there. And I love to use this chip quick solder. It's silver bearing solder and it's like hair thin. It's not like rosin core solder where this sticky stuff is left all over the board. It's nothing like that at all. Clip the leads off of this and the instruction manual says to check the microphone and make sure that everything is still working. So we're going to go do that real quick and be right back. And all is good with the mic. So the next thing that we have to do is remove a bunch of capacitors and a diode from the board. And again, we're gonna just replace those with new values and new components. In addition to changing the EQ curve of the mic, we're also gonna be changing the sensitivity of the mic. Now, apparently this has been taken care of on later revisions of the microphone. So if you have a later revision, this may not be necessary but I do have a version one and I mean, it's not like the sensitivity is bad on this mic, it just makes it a little bit better. So we replaced the diode. And now on to removing the four Wema caps that are on the bottom there. And this mic originally did have really good components in it. The capacitors that are in there are pretty top notch. Um, and the capsule apparently is pretty good as well, uh, which is why it's not suggested to swap out the capsule and just do these mods with the capacitors and the diode. And the only drawback with the solder pump is sometimes the manufacturer uses such little solder on the component that there's not enough for the vacuum to kind of suck up through the hole. So occasionally you just have to add a little bit more solder to where there was solder and then the vacuum just kind of takes it right out and it's no problem at all. I'm just cleaning up the pads a little bit, just making sure the solder is completely out of there. And now we take the board that we're given from the mod kit and we have to install the components that we're given for this new second board that's going to go into the mic. We have a couple of resistors that go in first. And usually when you're putting a circuit board together, you want to kind of go in height order so the smallest things go in first and the larger things go in later. Just makes it a lot easier to balance the board while you're doing it. And again, I get no residue on the back of the board using this solder. Next we have a little trim pot which is really cool. Um, this will allow us to change the voicing of the mic in the high end without having to change capacitors or resistors or anything like that. We can literally just get a screwdriver and turn that dial and change how the high end is handled. So if we want to roll off more, we can turn that one way. If we want to roll off less, we turn it the other way. And the last components we have are these big white capacitors that take up like half the board. Again, really easy build here. There's not much to it. Very few solder points that you have to deal with. The hardest thing really is getting the components out of the board without damaging the board. Without a proper solder pump, that can be quite difficult. You know, using solder braid or one of the pumps that I had, not, a, not an easy task at all. And then we have to put some new leads onto this board, and this is how this board is gonna connect to the existing board that's already there. And there's four wires that go onto this and we're given four pieces of really fine wire with Teflon coating on it. So it's nice, the heat from the soldering iron doesn't melt the insulation around the wire, so. 
makes it look really nice and neat. So I'm going to tin these wires so that way when I try to get them through the holes that are already in the board there, they don't start to fray. It is stranded wire, so get that in there. Get two wires in and then we're going to flip the mic over. And there's another pair of wires that I got to go on the other side. And if everything is clean and nice, it goes together pretty easily. And then we have to screw in the new board where that blank panel board used to be. I'm gonna clean up some of the wires that were sticking out from where we connected the leads so there's nothing kind of dangling. And that's it, the mod's complete. Just have to reassemble it. And those three screws go back in and call it a day. Let's go check this mic out in the studio. Oh, by the way, the entire voiceover here was done using this mic in its modded state. This is the Studio Project C1 microphone, unmodded, 6 inches from my mouth, 0 degrees on axis. This is the Studio Project C1 microphone, modded, 6 inches from my mouth, 0 degrees on axis. Today we're going to be talking about demoing a microphone that we plan on modding later. This is the before mod example. We're going to pay particular attention to the high frequencies in the voice to see if, after the mod, the sibilance is tamed a bit. We'll leave the low frequencies for the bass test. Today we're going to be talking about demoing a microphone that we plan on modding later. This is the after mod example. We're going to pay particular attention to the high frequencies in the voice to see if, after the mod, the sibilance is tamed a bit. We'll leave the low frequencies for the bass test.
there you have it. What did you think about this mod? I'm certainly more of a fan of darker mics, and this mod allows me to adjust that high end as I see fit. The little pot that we put in when putting them together, yeah, you just turn that with a screwdriver and you can change the high end. The mic also had some nice tight low end that will be quite useful in some spots. For the $69 that the mod costs, nice. Thanks, Bark. I certainly see the value in it. The build is relatively easy if you're good with a soldering iron. If not, there are certainly engineers available to do the mod for you for a modest fee. Nudge, nudge, wink, wink. What were your thoughts? Was it worth it? Not a big enough difference to justify the price? What are your thoughts about mods in general? Let's chat about it down in the comments below. To me, I think the difference is night and day. But as always, if you've gotten anything from today's video, please hit the like and subscribe button. If you're interested in studio mics and other things audio related, hit that notify button so you'll be notified when we put up a new video. If you have any suggestions for a video or any questions regarding this one, again, please use the comment section down below or send us a message through our website. I'd love to hear from you. Well, that's it for this time. This is Pags, signing off. <laughs>